so let's start with the step number zero in the end. Uh, so we will create a project without an operating system, just to show you an overview of the Cube uh, ID. So let's start. I'm going to switch my shared monitor, so I'm going to show directly the Cube ID. If you have an external monitor, I can ask you to use it, <laughs> so you can take your monitor of the PC to the presentation, to the to my sharing, and then use the external monitor for the Cube ID. Okay, let's start. So let's open the Cube ID, and then start with with the project. So let's go to File. New STM32 project. It takes a while because it's go to listing to listing the available platform. Here you can see our target selection. So the first tab is about the MCU and MPU selector. I mean, uh, this is re mostly related to your final application when you have your PCB. You can directly select the part number of the STM32 that you will go to use. For our training, we will use the tab number two, the board selector. Here you can find all of the supported board released by ST. I'm talking about the evaluation kit, I'm talking about the discovery kit, and I'm talking also about the nucleo board, the nucleo, the one in the middle, the white one. To find the, the nucleo, to find any board in the end or any part number, you can simply type a few characters of the part number. In this case, we can type uh, nucleo STM32H723 or directly H72 and you will be able to uh, find the only nuclear board that is integrating the STM32H723. So select the nucleo. On the table on the right, select again the line with the nucleo, and then click Next. The other two tabs here are for Example selector. If you are interested on some specific example, on some peri uh, some specific peripheral or some specific feature, you can use uh, uh, the text box and type what you are looking for. So click next here. Okay. A pop up will appear. You can uh, simply add the project name. So you can use any string you you like. I will use let underscore toggle no restriction so you can use uh, whatever string you like type next and uh, and and that's it you don't have to select uh, any or to change any feature respect to the default one uh, i only ask you to pay attention to the version 1.9.0 of the cube firmware for H7. So this is the, the default package here, and this is the package that you should have already be, uh, been installed. This is one of the prerequisites for this workshop. Here, click Finish. Uh, a pop-up will appear, initialize all peripherals with the default mode, click Yes. This will allow the tool not only to set up the peripheral of the nuclear board, so the button, the LED, and so on, but also to enable it. So once done, the project is uh, ready for the usage of the LED and the button and the peripheral uh, in general way. So click yes here. It will take a while. OK, so this is the result of uh, the project creation. Let's take a look at this, at the resulting. So on the left part of the screen, you have the Project Explorer. And without the operating system, the Project Explorer only includes two folders. A driver folder with the, uh, the driver, the low-level driver, the HIL driver, so the hardware abstraction layer for the STM32H7 here, and another subfolder for the CMCs, so for the core, for the ARM. The second folder, and obviously the driver folder, should not be modified because those are drivers. The most important folder here is the core folder. And 
in particular the, the source subfolder with our main.c file. Double click on it, so we were able to open it. On the central part of the screen, we have, OK, the main.c that we just opened, but we have also the lab toggle, so the project name, .ioc file. The IOC file is the, uh, the project file related to the cube MX. So the STM32 cube MX, the graphical uh, user interface that allows you to configure the STM32, the peripheral, the software pack, and so on, generate a project uh, EOC file, and you are able also to work with it inside the cube IDE, like we are doing right now. The tool is a graphical tool, the Cubemix is a graphical tool, so you can, for example, browse to the peripheral, you can click on the STM32 and drag and drop, you can use the, the, the mouse wheel to, to zoom in, to zoom out, and so on. For example, take a look at PB0. PB0 is uh, directly configured as LED underscore green, and this, this is the one that we will going to use for our session in the morning. On the left part of this uh, of this screen, you can see also the list of the STM32 grouped by categories, so system core, analog time, and so on, or simply listed in alphabetical order A to Z. In the upper part, you, have, you will have also not only the pinout and configuration, but you have also the clock configuration. We will have also the tab related to the project manager. On the project manager, you are able to define your workspace. You can define your tool chain, in this case, the cube ID, but you can select also K, Layar, or whatever. You have also advanced setting. You have a code generator for, for example, to uh, create every peripheral as a pair of uh, C or H file. And the last tab is about tool, for example, for the uh, battery lifetime estimation. You can set up uh, your preferred uh, battery and take a look at the resulting of the lifetime. So let's come back to the main.c file. Uh, this is the entry point of the project, always with or without an operating system. On the main file, on the main function in main void, you will have a setup stage with the initialization of the uh, peripheral, so the hardware abstraction layer in it. You will have the initialization of the system core, so the clock tree and so on. You will have one by one the initialization of all of the peripheral used on our platform. In this case, if you remember, we started with a board selector and not, not with an MCU selector. Working with a board selector, we have uh, already some peripheral configured on the Nucleo. So you have the Ethernet, you will have the UART, so the virtual com, and you will have also the, the USB OTG high speed. We will use in this, uh, in this uh, session in the morning only the GPIO in it in the end, because we are only going to use uh, with, uh, with a LED. Uh, and finally, the wild the while true, the while one. This is the uh, the real execution loop of our bare metal implementation without the operating system. And this is uh, this is where we are going to 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 work. Before moving on, uh, I kind of ask you to pay attention to to the code implementation. I mean, if you take a look at here at the main.c file, you will find okay the comment, but you will find also a lot of uh, begin and directive in comment mode. This is because every time you change the file config, the, the, the project configuration through the Cubemix, so through the toggle EOC file in this case, and you will generate the project, generate the source file, regenerate the source file, everything outside, outside begin and end comments will be deleted. So please always be sure to put your code inside the begin and end comments. 
In this case, we will put our source uh, code here at line 131 here. So in this case, we will be sure that even after regenerating the project with the CubeMX, our source code will be here again. So let's go into let's go into the to add adding the, the only two lines that are needed for our training in this stage. So without the operating system, line number one the line the, the GPIO togging. Line number two adding a delay because without a delay you will not able to see the resulting of the toggling because you are in a while through. So without the delay, you you will see the LED always on. So first instruction is the AL GPIO toggle pin. You can use the cheat sheet, you can use the PDF to copy paste, or you can simply type. I'm going to type using the auto completion feature of the of the tool of the cube uh, ID. So HAL underscore GPIO, for example. Let's press now control plus space bar. So control plus space. You will see here the list of all of the hardware abstraction layer related to GPIO, starting with the GPIO. So for example, the, the init, the external interrupt callback, the lock pin, or read pin, toggle pin here. This is the one we need. Click on the toggle pin. You will see here that two arguments are required. The port and the pin. We saw that is a port B and pin zero, but since we created it by Cube MX, we already have some label associated with some uh, with this GPIO PB0. So again, LED underscore green underscore control space. You will have here the port and the pin. The first parameter is the port. OK, and the second one is the pin. So select again LED underscore green pin. And we have done. So we are in C, so semicolon. Type enter, and after that, the second instruction. The second instruction is about the delay. So again, HIL underscore delay, control space. OK. With the control space, you will see that the only argument, the only parameter is a delay an assigned integer 32 bit. This is the quantity of millisecond needed for the delay. So parentheses and then millisecond we can use uh, you can use uh, whatever time you prefer. Uh, not so short, otherwise you will not we be able to see the, the LED toggling. We will use one second, so 1000 millisecond. After that, we finished our setup for the our uh, code generation for the bare metal implementation. We can we need now to save the project. So click on the uh, floppy disk image or Control S. And now you need to build the project. So click on the hammer or simply Control B. And then the compilation will start. This is the very first compilation, so all of the HIL file will, will be compiled. It will take a while, depending on the performances of your PC. I'm using an octa core, so it took only one second. So after that, we have done. The project has been, uh, let's say, converted from a C file to an X file. And then let's go to flash the board. Before flashing the board, you need to attach the board to the PC. If you take a look at the board of the Nucleo 144, uh, you will find uh, two, let's say, two STM32, two big chip. The one in the middle is the our target, the H723. 
the one on the top of the board, so on the opposite side of the Ethernet uh, um, of the Ethernet uh, connector, is the SD link. Uh, you need to attach a micro USB cable to that side of the board, so the, to the side where you have the SD link V3. Is the connector number one, CN1. The other side, obviously, of the cable will be attached to the PC. Let's see the result. OK. Uh, now let's go to flash the board. Let's go in, uh, in the bug, for example. So I can show you also the debug feature. Click on the debug. The debug the S. Select STM32 Cortex M C C application. A pop up will appear. You don't need to, let's say, to change anything. Let's go with the default feature, with the default setup. Click OK. OK, you can see on the control what's happening. So the connection with the ZDB server and so on. OK, the board has been flashed. The code is, uh, let's say, stuck at the, at the start of the main. We need to run it to allow the execution and the free flow, let's say. Click on the play resume button or type F8 and you should see your LED toggling with a two second period. So one second uptime and one second downtime. So congratulations, <laughs> you flashed your first STM32 project. Now let's go with the second part, the most interesting one. So let's go to replicate this behavior, but with the operating system. 